Long time no see, guys. I'm Nick from the Bulldogs Robot 30 Hours team, and we're back at you again with the Freight Frenzy Rule Overview. Yeah. I'm Howard. Uh, I'm the design lead for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours, and I'm going to be talking with Nick about uh, section 4.5 of the game manual. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up. By All right, no delay. Let's just get into it. So to start off, we'll go through some of the general rules about how you actually need to set up Freight Frenzy, I keep wanting to say Rover Ruckus, how to actually set up this game to play it. So for one, one box goes at each robot start point. Those are the X boxes that were showed off in the game animation. And then half of the remaining freight is placed in each warehouse. It's just divided down the middle and put into each corner. One duck is placed on the barcode, another is placed on the carousel, and then the rest are put on the Alliance loading bay under the carousel, just for use in end game. Drive teams can select the robot start point. It's pretty similar to past FTC games where you can put it anywhere on the Alliance wall, but it cannot be touching the carousel, the warehouse, or the barrier. So you're limited to kind of that open stretch of wall. Do what you will with that information. Robots must preload exactly one box. Must was a hard word used in the rule there, meaning that you have to preload a box, whether that just means you have to be touching it or it has to be within your robot Volume, we're not quite sure yet, but you have to preload at least one. And then finally, shipping element, your shipping element, your team custom one, can start on the loading dock or barcode in place of a duck. And if you do that, then the extra duck just goes back to your Alliance loading bay. Those are the pretty basic starting the match rules. How Howard will run you through the numbers. All right, so that's good because I like numbers. Um, so for scoring, uh, first of all, uh, during autonomous, you can deliver the duck that was preloaded on the carousel or pre-started out on the carousel uh, to the game field to get 10 points. Um, during Auton, there are four places that you can park. Uh, the storage unit and the warehouse are the two main locations. But for both of those, you can either park touching it or park entirely inside of it. Uh, if you park touching the storage unit, you get three points. If you park uh, inside of it, you get six points. And if you park touching the warehouse, you get five. And inside of the warehouse entirely, you get 10. Uh, during uh, autonomous, you can use uh, you can detect the, which part of the barcode the duck is on, uh, or your scoring element, uh, your team's own scoring element if you do that route, uh, to get either 10 or 20 points by uh, placing a block in the correct uh, part of your shipping, uh, I think, it, yeah, the sh storage unit, that. Um, and then also just during Auton, delivering uh, freight to a storage unit gets you two points, delivering it to a shipping hub gets six points. Uh, next is the driver controlled period, which is a little bit simpler in terms of rules. There's a little bit less going on. Um, any freight scored in the storage unit will get you one point. Uh, and any freight in the lower uh, level of the shipping hub is two points, middle level is four points, and high level is six points. Uh, during end game, if you deliver a, a duck to the floor, so using the carousel, every duck that you deliver to the floor or shipping elements, if you use a shipping element in place of a duck, is six points. Uh, if you balance your shipping hub so it's not leaning to either side, it's on that center bit that's sticking out of the bottom, uh, that is 10 points. If the shared hub, so the hub that both teams can put game pieces on, is leaning towards your side, so your alliance put more game pieces on there and tipped it to your side, that will get you 20 points. Uh, if you park at end game touching the warehouse, you get three points. And if you're in the warehouse, you get six points. And using your alliance game piece to cap uh, your shipping hub will get you 15 points. So for penalties, uh, a minor penalty will subtract 10 points from an alliance, and a major penalty will subtract 30. So one final note on that front, as I'm sure you noticed hearing us go through that, there are about maybe 50 different game elements here that are all called some variation of shipping or loading or freight or whatever. Just make sure you got that terminology down because if you don't, then this is gonna get confusing real fast. We're still getting there. 
But that's about all of the major freight frenzy points from 4.5. We're going to have some new people walk you through a new section of the rules. All right, my name is Montana, and with my friend here, we're going to introduce 4.6. Hey, uh, I'm Jesse. I'm the programming lead for the Bulldogs RI 3D, uh, 30 hours team. So, Monty will start and then I'll go through the general stuff. For sure. As I said, my name is Montana and uh, I'm a part of the robot in 30 hours. Um, I'm more of a mechanical and putting things together, but I would love to go over the rules with you guys. So, to start out, some general safety procedures. You cannot extend outside of the field on purpose. Um, there are allowances of accidental extension, but just try to avoid it because we want to be safe in the playing of our game Freight Frenzy. You may not have any like sharp or dangerous um, apparatus on the robot. All team members must have glasses or goggles on while you are on the field. Um, closed toed shoes are also important. Um, as far as the Auton to Teleop period, this is more of a general gameplay rule, but there is a five second grace period with a three, two, one, go countdown. All right, all you. All right, so now to general rules. Um, you cannot force an opponent uh, opposing robot to break a rule. That is not good. Um, you can't knock out pieces from robots. So if they're controlling a piece, you cannot in any way, shape, or form intentionally force it out of them. Um, if your robot is in two places at once, you will be awarded the highest point value of those places. If your uh, element is in contact with the robot, so say you have some cargo and you're going to place it into the scoring area, um, it will be considered zero points until it is no longer in contact with the robot. One important thing to note is that there is a one inch tolerance in either direction on elements of the field, such as the wall or some of the tape, things of that nature. Um, another very general rule is that the robot contained within 18 by 18 by 18 inch volume. And now moving more into specific game pieces, um, you cannot place additional ducks onto the carousel during autonomous period. There's one that's preloaded onto the carousel to begin with, but after that is knocked off, you can no longer place another one. There's no hard defense, which would include pinning, trapping, etc., for five plus seconds during teleop and absolutely none during autonomous. Uh, you cannot make game pieces easier or harder to score in any way, shape, or form. So you cannot intentionally uh, misform the game pieces in some way. Uh, you cannot intentionally de-score opponent pieces. You cannot intentionally move any of the shipping hubs, which are the teeter-totter scoring elements. Um, a hub is unbalanced if a robot is touching it. So if your robot is supporting in any way the your alliance's uh, shipping hub, it will not be counted as points. And if you touch an opponent's hub, it will be balanced for them. Uh, you cannot touch or interact with in any way, shape, or form the shared hub in Autonomous, which is the one behind the PVC gaps. You cannot block opponent ga uh, capping, which is when they go to put their team shipping element on top of their hub. The shipping element must also go on your hub. You cannot place it on an opponent's or on the shared hub. Uh, robots must be fully outside the warehouse to score. You cannot go inside of it or extend into it in any way. Let's see. Uh, the robot cannot place objects on the carousel, so you can't uh, pick up a duck and put it back on the carousel to get extra points. You have to have your human player do that. The robot can also not touch the top or the bottom of the carousel. You can only touch the edges of it when you're uh, interacting with it. And you can also not touch the opponent's carousel and any robot that is touching a carousel is considered safe. So there will be some penalties applied to touching them if you go and do that. Uh, you may only intentionally control one element at a time. Uh, I say intentionally with a lot of gusto i suppose because um you can say run into a cargo element or something like that unintentionally and that'll be fine it's up to the ref to decide that though uh carousel objects must hit the ground so you cannot catch them mid-air and they will not be scored until they hit the ground you can only put one duck at a time on the carousel 
The duck must be start on the carousel touching the bar, I believe is called the stabilizer plate in uh, game manuals terminology, when you begin spinning. And before you place another duck onto the carousel, you must completely stop the carousel. Well, that's that. We're going to move it along to the next section of the rules. All right. Hello. I'm Saqib. This is 4.1 scoring summary. So we already went over the gameplay. This is more to talk about our strategy and how what our what we're going to put our emphasis on. So Gavin will start with like the autonomous points, and I'll talk about the drive control and end game. So. Like Saqib said, my name's Gavin. Uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, what, what we're going to be looking for in the autonomous period, um, the first 30 seconds of the match. Um, we're basically going to prioritize the sections with the most points. Um, so looking to spin the wheel, looking to spin the carousel to deliver the duck onto the field is going to be the highest priority, um, as well as prioritizing the um, autonomous bonuses on the bottom. Uh, so it's going to require us to play cl pay close attention to the field and look at um, look at the duck and the shipping element and and determine where we're going to put our preloaded um, our our preloaded freight. So um, like I said, we're going to prioritize the two bottom ones because it's 10 and 20 points each, as well as the top one for delivering the duck, which is 10 points, um, and if we have time, we'll, we will work on uh, positioning our robot inside of the warehouse um, because that will give us 10 points. Um, so that's a few of the things to look out for in our autonomous period, and you'll be able to see those soon. Yeah. Uh, onto the di driver control, um, we're going to do the freight. So it's going to be on an alliance shipping hub. The one we're going to try for is level three because it gives us the max amount of points because it's six, right? Um, and then going in the end game, we're gonna um, alliance shipping hub balanced. That's gonna give us 10 points, right? So we're gonna put more emphasis on that. Shared shipping hub unbalanced, that's gonna give us 20. So the last 30 seconds or so, we're gonna try to aim for this. And the final um, capping each team shipping element, which is like 15. So yeah, that's the scoring summary. And we'll move on to the next section. Hi guys. The best choice in markers. <laughs> My name is Cole Jordan. I'm a mechanical engineering major here at Kettering University, and we now have section 4.8. Section 4.8 is some of the more important penalties. This is a little bit of a recap, but these are what penalties we thought would have a good impact on match performance. It's kind of hard to read here, so I apologize for that. Our first penalty is penalty GS3A, which is moving your own alliance's shipping hub and that incurs a major penalty. The next thing is GS3D, which is moving the shared shipping hub. We think that there's a good potential for a lot of contact with those shipping hubs, and we're concerned about incurring any penalties from pushing them. Another penalty that we've got here is our GS5B, which is scoring while well inside the warehouse. That incurs a minor penalty, but we're concerned about not having our robot completely out of our warehouse and trying to place game elements on some of our shipping hubs. Hey guys, I'm Luke Fenstermacher. I'm also a mechanical engineer here at Kettering University. Going into the back half of our list, first we have contact with the top or bottom of the carousel, incurring a minor penalty for doing it once and then for continuous breaking of this rule, you're going to occur multiple, multiple more penalties along with that. So that's very important. You can only touch the rim of the carousel, which can definitely influence your design. On top of that, we have the carousel elements. Anything that's coming off of the carousel must touch the floor before, con or before you control that element. So for the shipping crate for your team, you might have a, some sort of strategy with that that will have to be touching the floor first. So you may have a little bit more trouble actually getting control of that because of it. And lastly, we have a drive team cannot load the carousel before it is stopped. That will be a major penalty if done so. So you just need to make sure your strategy can effectively stop the carousel before you end up loading it with the ducks or the shipping elements so that you can avoid these penalties. So that is all we have for 4.8. This again was somewhat just of a recap of prior rules, but as always, make sure to read the full game manual to get the full effect. Hi, I'm Justin Pointer. I'm a mechanical engineer here 
I'm going to go over section 4.4. Honestly, should have done this one first, but there's a lot. Um, I'm not going to go over all of it, and as stated many, many times before, you should really go through and read all these, especially if you're a new, new team. There's a lot of uh, lingo that goes on, and this will help you a lot of uh, knowing what's going on when everyone's talking about. So uh, a couple of the main ones that we want to talk about. So first, balance, unbalance. These are with the, uh, the shipping hubs and balance. So uh, the definition of that is when the shipping hub is balanced, when it's completely supported by the playing field floor, um, and only the shipping uh, dome base, the very bottom of it, the flat part, is um, touching the playing field. So any other orientation where it's sitting on the side, that's considered unbalanced. The barcodes. The barcodes are going to be the white pieces of tape that you're going to see on the, the field. Um, those are where you're either going to have a duck or the team shipping element um, that you make uh, that will be placed on one of those. Um, another one of our um, key ones to look at is what's considered freight. So freight is either the cargo, the boxes, or the ducks. The cargo being those kind of wiffle balls, the boxes being the yellow kind of waffle um, boxes there, and then also the docks, the ducks. Um, and then there's also uh, shipping hubs. So think of it kind of like a building. Level one is on the bottom, level two is in the middle, level three is on top. Um, and then uh, one other last one, the definition of warehouse operations. So that is when you start completely out of the warehouse, drive into the warehouse area, pick up one piece of freight, and then drive fully out of the warehouse. So again, those are the ones that we're going to go through that are kind of important, but there's a lot of them, especially if you're a new team. We highly recommend you go through and read all of these so you know everything that's going on. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University is the leader in new programs of expertise, including artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and automotive engineering design. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12th, 2021. Thank you to Animark, GoBuilda, and Rev Robotics for providing components and giveaways to the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.